Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here and I'm preparing to feed a couple of my worm bins. I had a few things piling up in the freezer, so I bought them down here. In fact, it's the same stuff that they were fed nine days ago. It's the radish leaves, little clippings from radishes, and coffee. Coffee is a pretty staple food item. I've got some grit on the shelf, which I could bring over and include too, but I'm also including a bunch of extra bedding here. It's just some used coffee filters and some torn up newspaper bits. So uh, let's get this glove on and get to work. I got a little bit of a sneak preview yesterday of what was going on in this bin because I came into this bin to get volunteer worms to use them to start up a new time lapse video that I'm filming. So the, um, the population was lessened a little bit in here. Came in here and grabbed a few worms. I, um, I stirred things up a little bit, quite a bit here too. A lot of the stuff that's sitting right out here on the top surface is um, stuff that I had scooped out of the feeding area to fish worms out of. And then I just pretty much just poured it right back in here in the middle and tried to cover it up a little bit. So large portion of what we're seeing right here on top is all the, um, the paper that the worms had been inhabiting that I scooped them all out of. It was really the bedding that I laid down underneath last week's feeding, or the last, I don't know, call it last week's feeding. It was a little bit more than a week ago at this point. A week and two days. And there really wasn't much left. I mean, the, um, the paper that was placed in underneath the feeding area um, was kind of commingled with some of the leafy material that was added as food. But there were only tiny scraps of it remaining. So it was kind of a little preview to let me know that this bin can definitely benefit from a, uh, a feeding today. Just more, um, just more paper. It's a whole bunch of shredded paper all kind of piled together. Let's see if I could just uh, fluff it up, air it out a little bit to get it unmatted from itself then it just becomes like you know a big wad that nothing can really squirm around or get into just trying to make sure it's uh, got maximum surface area exposure hmm. I guess as I look through here I do find weird things like uh, whatever this is it's just some sort of mushy something and it uh, looks like it's just got some crushed eggshell, some grit attached to it. Some sort of food from some previous feeding, but I have no clue what it could be. <laughs> it's kind of a cool system. It's always, um, it's always pretty heavily populated, you know, every time I go picking through where the feeding always gets added, right down the middle. Always a um, good number of nice, large-sized worms there to greet me yeah all kinds of bedding left over from previous feedings these leaves that we're adding today they're just such a flimsy um material i mean when you buy radishes in the store i don't know if you ever bought radishes in the store even then a lot of the leaves that they come attached to are already um halfway rotted away so it just um it seems to me like a kind of a material that breaks down really quickly um, even more quickly I would think once it's in a worm bin and it's just getting inundated with all kinds of stuff that just wants to eat it <laughs> alright lots of little worms in here nice crowded feeding area We've pretty much excavated it at this point so we could uh, dump in what we bought here to add I've always felt like I was a little bit stingy when it came to bedding, so I've been making an extra effort lately to see if I can maybe uh, get a little bit more generous on the addition of carbon in my bins. So as you can see, between these two coffee filters and then maybe a handful of that uh, 
handful of that torn up newspaper that was also crumbled up into little balls. Got ourselves another pretty generous pile of bedding. I think at this time I'm going to opt to just pour this stuff out. It's almost like all flaked up and broken up like into a powder practically. I think I've just been moving it in and out of the freezer a lot, making room for other things. <laughs> Every time I pull it out of there, I just kind of give the bag a crunch. And all these um, little frozen radish leaves all just seem to crumble up into almost like a dust. Kind of a simple way to process the food for giving it to the worms. So I'm thinking, just scatter in a little bit of uh, bedding on top of it too. Make it into almost like a, a sandwich. But before we cover everything up, I've also got another food item here, is the coffee. Don't want to forget the coffee. It'll almost like uh, create a, a covering for the food. I'm pulling some of this existing material from the sides. It's just a mix of who knows what, you know. A lot of, oh, here's where we got some of the little leftover bits that we collected on the way in. I forgot about those. All right. 600 days. Today's this bin's 600th um, birthday. So it's its 600th day since I launched these worms from cocoons. Luckily these plastics, these two pieces of staggered plastic, this one running up these two walls and this one running up these two walls, they're doing a good job keeping the moisture down within the bin. Can't complain. Okay. Well, I miscalculated. I forgot that I've got no grit. That's why none was added to the vermi bag. So none's, get, none's getting added today here either. By the next time we come back in here to feed the lie, it will have made more. Because that'll be another week or more. Considering the flimsy kind of feeding they received last time, it seems like I probably could have come back in here in less than the amount of time that it took for me to circle back to come feed this bin again. It's been nine days and uh, as I observed already in the vermi bag, there was very little, if any, remaining signs of the of the radish leaves that got added last time. Definitely a good amount of moisture in here. Kinda, kinda wet. I don't know, sometimes it's just best at this point, if you think your bin is wet, maybe go right to the bottom and see if there's like pooling liquid or if there's anything like that going on. Well, more wet, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. Here's more of that paper. Questioning whether I need to add much of it here. The vermi bag is a somewhat larger system. It seemed like it could handle it, but I'm wondering if I've already kind of maxed out on the <laughs> paper situation here in this bin. I also think that this bin might not have as um, robust a size colony in it as the vermi bag. Yeah, you know, we didn't see any signs of green in the, um, in the vermi bag, but here there's some traces of the last feeding here too. This is probably the grit that was placed in here, the, um, crushed eggshell. So whatever. Skipping the grit probably doesn't matter then today since they didn't do away with what was already added previously. I just saw some more signs of green here and there. But then again, you know, signs of green doesn't necessarily mean that there's tons of leftovers either. Maybe some of those pieces were just jammed in a position where the worms were unable to get to them easily. But I'm definitely seeing traces of it here and there in various places. Just green mush at this point, hardly enough to even consider as leftovers. It's almost just discoloration on the cardboard or on the paper. And it's all they're getting today too, just a little bit more of these radish leaves. I think next time though, maybe, maybe check back in here in about a week or so. Maybe don't wait nine days next time even though this bin could handle it with all this extra carbon in here all this carbon is 
a food source too. I just like to, you know, kind of complement it with a good steady supply of kitchen scraps too. Definitely a lot more carbon than you've seen me use in most of my bins recently, right? <laughs> if you're a regular on my channel, I've gotten super uh, generous with the application of carbon suddenly, right? All right, so I guess what I'm really doing here is that the, um, at the same time that I'm opening up a hole for us to place food into here, I'm also just scoping out some of these larger hunks of stuff. Most of it I stick my finger through and it just breaks into smaller little stuff that just has sort of castings holding it together and you know that's okay I'm just looking for um, you know large residual chunks of what might just be paper matted together which I would like to fluff up if I could a little bit or if I do find a large chunk of leftover food that's taking a while to break down I'll try to fragment that into smaller pieces too if possible the, uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the high moisture level in this bin is only going to be a benefit for now. So we'll stick with it. Definitely keep uh, keep the moisture level high in here. Hey Siri, how many days have passed since October 29th, 2020? It was 78 days ago. Alright, so yesterday this was 11 weeks old, this bin. 78 days. It's usually around this time that I start contemplating, you know, when the bin will receive its last feeding to start priming things for uh, harvest. In a bin this size, you probably can't go much more than 100 days or maybe, you know, a dozen or 15 feedings or so before you start finding that, you know, you're running out of room. All right, let's get this bin fed too. All right, so I'm just gonna follow through with the original plan, which was to use all of this paper as bedding in this feeding. Because you can never really go wrong with too much bedding is what they say, right? It'll all eventually go. It just might take a little time. Try to fragment it into smaller pieces, which will help speed that time, hopefully. Give each piece of material good access from all corners, all edges, so they can nibble away at it and make a meal out of it. Ooh, stuck my hand into a pile of castings. All right, so we should really get rid of this stuff before all of this fine fragmented leafy matter just wants to stick to the bag as it melts. So if it had been quicker while it was still frozen, this stuff wouldn't have stuck in here. So I'll just set this aside, opened up a little bit, let it dry so I can pull all that stuff out after it has dried. Kind of cool how it fragments into little pieces so the one thing difference here is um a whole bunch of leaves again like last time but it's not just radish leaves like these it's brussels sprouts too all right not bad good size feeding we'll uh we'll do the sandwich thing again here right put the old carbon on top of the Feeding with the fresh carbon beneath it. Get, definitely get a good look at how much of it there is here. Yeah, they say the night crawlers like the carbon, so I feel like I'm doing a good thing here when I pile it in thick. Make sure we've got a couple of old food scraps that are breaking down gradually. Every now and then we bump into a the husk of a mango seed. This is an example of one that's really been worked pretty heavily it just you know falls to pieces at this point but when one of these things starts out um they're tough they take a long time to break down they all go just like the rest of it everything goes okay not bad if 
I do shoot for harvesting this thing soon, then um, all these leaves are going to take a while. I mean, the leaves themselves are, for the most part, gone. It's just their stems. So um, I'm, I'm definitely reluctant to use this type of bedding in a bin that's already at this stage of its life cycle. So it's clear that I've added leaves recently, but um, I don't think I'm going to add more leaves now. I'm probably just going to stick to paper for now as far as carbon supplements in the bins. And here's just a whole pile of nitrogen to complement all that carbon. Okay. Very nice. So we'll just use a little bit of existing material to also give us a little snapshot of how things look down low. You know, when things are pretty moist, I do want to see down low what the story is. And down low, it's just, you know, more moist material like what I found on top, not muddy material. I mean, it's, it's you know, if it was muddy, it would be all over my gloves, but it's actually almost um, perfect. If it's not sticking to my glove usually it's just the right moisture level once it all starts sticking to the glove that's when I start sensing that it's uh, maybe a little too damp but this is really good I think this is very favorable for the worms okay let's go do a little stir up on this side too finding material that's almost the same very nice a bunch of worms hanging out over here too Probably taking advantage of all the um, older feedings that have been pushed out to the sides as all the new feedings get placed down the middle. <laughs> it almost seems like that's probably the place where you would expect to almost find more worms. Looking good. Well, as you saw, this is not a huge feeding. And it's, uh, it's all material that's really flimsy, so it's probably going to get gobbled up one, two, three. Probably even more quickly in the other system, in the vermi bag. I'm sure we'll be back in here soon to see how things are progressing in the European Nightcrawler systems. But I think space might also be a consideration in here at some point soon. We might have to consider uh, making one of these feedings in the near future. It's final feeding for a while, giving the worms a chance to focus on whatever else is in the bin still all around them, all kinds of leftover bedding and food items from previous feedings and make it into a tub of nice fine castings. All right, everyone, I've, uh, I've managed to come out of this pretty clean. I'll get everything cleaned up and put away over here. But before I do, uh, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. And if you, uh, if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much.